This is the Blacktron Invader from 1987, and this is LEGO's reimagining of it here in 2023. How do the two compare? Well, let's take a closer look. Blacktron 1 was actually a pretty short-lived space sub-theme released back in 1987. It only produced some five main sets altogether with some smaller ones on and off for the next few years. Blacktron 2, the theme's successor, had a little bit more fleshed out portfolio. Nonetheless, I think Blacktron 1's color scheme is pretty iconic, which made it a fitting subject to revisit for one of these remake sets. You could probably tell by the color scheme, but Blacktron was one of the bad guy factions in early classic space. Of the five main sets released from 1987 to 1988, four of them were vehicles. Then there was one pretty large iconic set, Message Intercept Base, which served as the Blacktron headquarters. Really, really awesome set and incredibly difficult to get your hands on. At the time of recording this at least, the Blacktron Cruiser, as this has been renamed, is obtainable as a gift with purchase from lego.com with orders exceeding $190 US in any theme. And as far as a gift with purchase goes, this is one of the bulkier ones they've produced. It is an incredibly spendy threshold, but you're looking at 356 pieces in this rather large vehicle. Compared to the rather botched release of the Forestman's Hideout gift with purchase, I think having this start on January 1st, when there's a lot of great sets to buy, is a little more ideal of a situation. As a remake, this is incredibly successful in a number of ways. It maintains the rather bizarre, yet unique and memorable design that was introduced to us in 1987. I mean, have you ever seen a ship shaped like this? It stays very true to the original, but they've made some attempts to modernize it, making use of obviously new pieces that have been produced since 1987, but also elongating the ship, making it much more sleek in a number of places, most notably in the front and the back. Notice on the old model how there's this weird indentation in the back, whereas here it's made much more fluid and it really blends all together. The main gimmick of the Blackthron sets is that they split apart and can be rearranged within the sets themselves, but also be combined with other sets from the theme. The 1987 set makes use of Technic pins. So as you can see here, we could take out the transport pod and make ourselves a smaller ship, which I must say looks a little better than the elongated one. And we have this separate pod. LEGO's made sure that you can do the same thing with the updated model. Even though this is a display piece intended for adults, the packaging does say 18 plus again, it's still plenty fun to mess around with. Instead of Technic pins, we get the use of bars and clips, and I really like the shortened version of the new ship. They've given us the additional bonus that you can actually take off the back thruster and winglet too. And I guess you could attach this onto the back too? No, that's definitely not as good of a look. The other part of the ship that's been redesigned really well, in my opinion, is the front. And of course, LEGO has the advantage of some nice new glass pieces. I believe this is from the Lightyear set, maybe a few others. Looks much more sci-fi compared to the rather blocky version from the past. Both cockpits, though, are plenty spacious. As you can see in the 1987 version, there's actually lots of extra room behind. And in the remake, you get a ton of room in the front where they've put away a metal detector too, which is a nice addition. Both have some consoles and undoubtedly, you know by now, everything in the 87 version is printed. So both pieces that you see there are prints and everything in the remake is a sticker. So I've had some time to think about this. Obviously, I'd love to see prints, but I think printing the eight so pieces that you see stickered here is probably unrealistic. I think we actually ended up getting more detail in this set by them going with the stickered route. I could imagine maybe three prints max out of this set, but instead we end up getting eight stickered elements, which still look plenty good, and we get what otherwise 
would have been a series of impossible prints, including an extra printed console inside the cargo bay, a Blacktron logo on this wonderful little cargo bin, and yet another detail you won't find on the original, which is the logo on the back. I don't mind them all that much. They're a pain. Yes, I would have preferred eight prints, but I think that's a little unrealistic to ask for. Now that we've opened up the cockpit, we might as well talk about the minifigures. Each set technically has two minifigures. Of course, we get our standard Blacktron figure, and wow, he is created gloriously faithful. Here's the new version, here's the old version. However, there is one small, very positive change in that the torso also has back printing, which is just subtly different from the front. They've maintained the style very well, and I appreciate that a lot, even though it's pretty much all covered by the air tanks. The other minifigure is a robot that each set has, and he certainly is a derpy looking little fella, but lovable nonetheless. The main piece that makes up the body of the 87 version has long since been discontinued, but I think LEGO chose a really good alternative, which is some sort of ray gun that I believe was introduced for Overwatch. It maintains that same angle, and they've given us the same headpiece, which is just a Travis brick, as well as the same arms as the original, and I love that faithfulness. The robot in each can be stored away in the cargo compartment, where he also has some tools to fix the ship, a wrench and a hammer, both the same in both sets. I do appreciate that a great deal. It's much easier to fit the robot into the old version though, I must say. The new version just doesn't have as much cargo room as the old version, which makes use of these wall panel corner pieces, which are hollow on the inside. But I do like the way this cargo compartment opens, the triangular theme of Blacktron and the three opening hatches. It just works well for me. I just wish there was more room. I don't think those pieces were utilized as well as they could have been. Also in the cargo compartment, as I mentioned briefly earlier, is another little bonus that we don't get in the original model. It's a Blacktron box. And inside are two pure black ingots. Some mysterious metal they're mining on an alien planet, I'm sure. It's a nice little touch, and I actually really like that we got a sticker on this one with the branding. Moving on to the back, we get these very interesting winglets here in red. Perhaps they're meant to be solar panels of sorts. They definitely give off that vibe in the newer version, which is made using a bunch of 1x2 trans red tiles. The original actually used that 3x6 wedge plate in transparent red, which is super cool to see weird transparent pieces like that and uh, I enjoy that a lot. It uses a lot less pieces than the new one too. Of course, they're all hinged on both models, so you can kind of configure them however you want. And then there's a single thruster on the back. I guess the only other part I forgot to mention is that the wings in the front can be angled on both. There are stoppers in the newer model that prevent them from going all the way back like the old one. And then we get two laser cannons in the front of each. I do have the original instructions for the 1987 model, which is fantastic. I love taking a look at these things. They're beautiful. This one is in great condition too. The steps are a lot more complicated than the steps you'll see today, but it's still a pleasant building experience. On the back is perhaps the best part where it shows some of the combiner models that you can make by interchanging the modules from each of the sets. And I love how the front too serves as a bit of an advertisement for the set itself with multiple different pictures. The new instructions was a bit more unfortunate of a situation. They came folded over in the box as happens from time to time. Thankfully, the sticker sheet was fine. I've had them pretty much destroyed in the past, but I do really like, again, the classic design of the box that they developed for the remake. That's good stuff to see. I know there are those who say the color scheme is a bit dull for their taste, but the fact that it's just so classic Lego, where the color palette was a lot more limited in 87, this instantly screams classic Lego just because of its colors. Again, I think Lego has pretty faithfully recreated a classic set, which is going to be desirable for a lot of collectors. Even though it's a spendy threshold to get this, Ultimately, it does end up being free, which is nice, especially on January 1st, when you are probably going to be filling your LEGO shopping cart with a lot of other things. Uh, LEGO did a terrific job remaking this, modernizing it, but staying absolutely true to the original model. 
Do you have this thing? Are you planning on picking it up? Hopefully it's still in stock. I know they've had problems with that in the past. We'll see. That's all I've got for this time. You have yourself a great life and I'll catch you later.